Hello, this is Jane Goodall. I want to share my shock and sadness as I track the spread of the COVID-19 coronavirus around the world. This pandemic is affecting people everywhere. I'm thinking of those who are sick and their family and friends, of the doctors and healthcare practitioners who are working selflessly to care for their patients, and of the scientists around the world working desperately to find a vaccine or a cure. And there are those who've been laid off work as the financial crisis deepens, and the effect that this pandemic is having on so many industries, especially in the transport sector and tourist sectors. The sheer scale of all this is terrifying. Right now, the best way to slow down the spread of the virus is to do what they call social distancing. I chose to follow the advice of my doctor and friends and remain grounded at home in the UK at just about the same time as events in my planned North American tour were being cancelled. It's frustrating, but I must stay healthy. I've got so much more to do before I die. Moreover, this social distancing is a way to protect not only myself, but others. You may feel fine yourself, but you could be infected without showing the symptoms, then you might infect others, especially those who are vulnerable. So if you possibly can, do join me in keeping away from public places. Try not to get close to others. And if you meet a friend, don't shake hands, though an elbow bump is permissible. And don't forget to wash your hands. There is one silver lining to this dark cloud. This pandemic has reopened discussions about the danger of the hunting, trafficking and eating of wild animals. COVID-19 is one of those viruses that have crossed the species barrier and jumped from animals to humans. Evidence suggests that the host in this case was a bat or possibly a pangolin for sale in the wet market in the Chinese city of Wuhan, where live animals are sold for food. The SARS pandemic originated in a wet market, wet market in Guangdong, probably from a palm civet. The terrible HIV AIDS pandemic came from viruses that jumped from monkeys and chimpanzees sold for meat in Central Africa. Chimpanzees and humans are closely related. We share 98.6 of our DNA so that avoiding contact with them protects them from human infectious diseases as well as us from theirs. So we must act not only to protect ourselves but also great apes and other species as well. Thankfully the Chinese government has reacted swiftly and imposed a ban on the trafficking, breeding and selling of wild animals for food right across China. We must hope that this ban is permanent and that subsequently include wild animals used in China for other purposes, especially traditional medicine. This would set an example to all countries where wild animals are exploited for food, research, medicine, for their skins, or for trophies from animals hunted by the wealthy, such as rhinos for their horns, elephants for ivory, and others for heads stuffed and hung on the wall. In other words, countries all around the world. This would at least eliminate one cause of a future pandemic. At times like this, we see the worst and the best in human nature. Since the coronavirus began to spread around the world, there have been hundreds of reports of hate crimes against the Chinese and other people of Asian origin. And there are reports of people who've stolen masks and hand sanitizers from hospitals. But there are far more stories about people caring for the sick, donating masks where they're needed, ensuring the housebound have sufficient food, reaching out without touching to those who are discriminated against. So many people during these dark days showing the best of human qualities, compassion and altruism. Let's all use the gift of our lives to make this world a better place especially at this time. Together we shall get through this really difficult time and we shall have learned what is truly important in life, 
family, friendship, love, and above all, our health. Thank you. Yo 我是非常的不安全的我是非常的不安全的我是非常的不安全的我是非常的不安全的我是非常的不安全的我是非常的不安全的我是非常的不安全的我是非常的不安全的我是非常的不安全的我是非常的不安全的我是非常的不安全的我
the problem, sir? Smut keeps giving the dog catcher the slip. Could you finally turn him in? Oh, you don't have to turn him in, officer. See, he's my dog. Really? Well, how come uh, I seen him around and not you? Me? Well, I don't get out much. Well, uh, what's your dog's name? Name? Well, that's easy. I call him... Sandy. That's right, Sandy, because his fur's a nice sandy color. Sandy, huh? Well, why don't you call him? Call him? Yeah. By his name. Sandy. Gee, I would. Only sometimes Sandy forgets his name is Sandy. Right, Sandy? Just call your dog. License. Otherwise, he goes to the pound for an eternal sleep. Yes, sir. Get home before you catch pneumonia in this cold. Oh, it doesn't bother me. When I'm stuck with the day, and that's great. Because that's what Americans do now. They're always willing to trade away a little of their freedom in exchange for the feeling, the illusion of security. What we have now is a completely neurotic population obsessed with security and safety and crime and drugs and cleanliness and hygiene and germs. There's another thing, germs. Where did this sudden fear of germs come from? in this country. Have you noticed this? The media constantly running stories about all the latest infections, salmonella, E. coli, hantavirus, bird flu, and, and Americans are, they panic easily, so now everybody's running around scrubbing this and spraying that and overcooking their food and repeatedly washing their hands, trying to avoid all contact with germs. It's ridiculous and it goes to ridiculous lengths in prisons. Before they give you a lethal injection, they swab your arm with alcohol. <laughs> It's true. It's true. It's true. Well, well, they don't want you to get an infection. And you can see their point. Wouldn't want some guy to go to hell and be sick. It would take a lot of the sportsmanship out of the whole execution. Fear of germs. Why, these fucking pussies. You can't even get a decent hamburger anymore. They cook the shit out of everything now because everybody's afraid of food poisoning. Hey, where's your sense of adventure? Take a fucking chance, will you? You know how many people die in this country from food poisoning every year? 9,000, that's all. It's a minor risk. <laughs> Take a fucking chance, bunch of goddamn pussies. Besides, what do you think you have an immune system for? It's for killing germs. But it needs practice. It needs germs to practice on. So, so listen. So listen. If you kill all the germs around you and live a completely sterile life, then when germs do come along, you're not going to be prepared. And never mind ordinary germs. What are you going to do when some super virus comes along that turns your vital organs into liquid shit? 
I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to get sick, you're going to die, and you're going to deserve it because you're fucking weak and you got a fucking weak immune system. <laughs> now, all right, God damn it. Hey. All right. Let me tell you a true story about immunization, okay? When I was a little boy in New York City in the 1940s, we swam in the Hudson River, and it was filled with raw sewage, okay? We swam in raw sewage, you know, to cool off. <laughs> and at that time, the big fear was polio. Thousands of kids died from polio every year. But you know something? In my neighborhood, no one ever got polio. No one, ever. You know why? Because we swam in raw sewage. <laughs> It strengthened our immune systems. The polio never had a prayer. We were tempered in raw shit. <laughs> so, so personally, I never take any special precautions against germs. I don't shy away from people who sneeze and cough. I don't wipe off the telephone. I don't cover the toilet seat. And if I drop food on the floor, I pick it up and eat it. <laughs> I eat it. Yes, I do. Even if I'm at a sidewalk cafe in Calcutta, the poor section, on New Year's morning during a soccer riot. And you know something, in spite of all that so-called risky behavior, I never get infections. I don't get them. I don't get colds, I don't get flu, I don't get headaches, I don't get upset stomachs. And I, you know why? Because I got a good, strong immune system and it gets a lot of practice. My immune system is equipped with the biological equivalent of fully automatic military assault rifles with night vision and laser scopes. And we have recently acquired phosphorus grenades, cluster bombs, and anti-personnel fragmentation mines. So, when my white blood cells are on patrol, reconnoitering my bloodstream, seeking out strangers and other undesirables, if they see any, any suspicious looking germs of any kind, they don't fuck around. They whip out the wax weapons, they wax the motherfucker, and deposit the unlucky fellow directly into my colon. <laughs> into my colon. There's no nonsense. There's no Miranda warning. There's none of that three strikes and you're out shit. First defense, bam, into the colon you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, hey, uh, oh. And speaking of my colon, I want you to know I don't automatically wash my hands every time I go to the bathroom, okay? Can you deal with that? <laughs> sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. You know when I wash my hands? When I shit on them. <laughs> That's the only time. That's the o And you know how often that happens? Tops, tops, two, three times a week, tops, <laughs> tops. Maybe a little more frequently over the holidays, you know what I mean? And I'll tell you something else, my well-scrubbed friends. You don't always need a shower every day. Did you know that? It's overkill. Unless you work out or work outdoors or for some reason come in intimate contact with huge amounts of filth and garbage every day, you don't always need a shower. All you really need to do is to wash the four key areas. Armpits, asshole, crotch, and teeth. Got that? Armpits, asshole, crotch, and teeth. In fact, you can save yourself a whole lot of time if you simply use the same brush on all four areas. <laughs> <laughs>